What's going on guys? Today's video is actually a highlight from my recent 40 minute skeleton visual effects mega tutorial. Link to that will be down in the description. I just figured highlight videos like this are easier to watch for people that are specifically just trying to search for this one thing. So hope you enjoy. New tutorial will be out in about two days. Have a nice week guys and I'll talk to you later. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it on the hands because that's where I placed my track markers and I did that for a very specific reason. So we can use Adobe After Effects motion tracking and we can use the puppet tool to lock these skeleton hands into place. So we're just going to use a Google image for this. No 3D software needed. You can use the same thing I was talking about with the transparency, with the license. Um, just look up skeleton hands like this. So you want to find a PNG. So once you find the hand that you want, so I ended up bringing this into Photoshop just to remove the background. I just dragged the Photoshop project file back into After Effects so that I can have my little skeleton hand here, PNG. So let's do a basic little lineup for this on my hand. Let's go ahead and rotate this. And this is the thumb. So we need to go like that, scale that down a bit. And here's our basic little lineup. So there's a little trick which I'm going to show you that I use for this. It's also a pretty useful trick for any other projects you're working on. We're going to hide this layer for now and we're going to create some more tracking info on our hands using these track markers. So to start this off, you're just going to right click in your gray space, go to new and you're going to create a null object. And I'm going to rename this and I'm going to create a null for each of the fingers on my on my right hand here. So I'm going to make this one called left pointer and then we can easily just control D to duplicate rename this left middle and control D rename left pinky. And I probably should have put it on the thumb as well, but it's fine for now. We have the main basics, the basis of our movement. So we have our null objects here. These are going to be the placeholders for our motion tracking. So let's go to where our hands are up and we can see them clearly. I'm going to just control shift D and split this because we don't need this part. This is where our hands aren't even up. So right click on your main base footage and we're going to go to track and stabilize and we're going to go to track motion. This is going to bring up a track point and it's going to, as you see, bring up our tracker window. So step number one, we're going to take this track point, just click in the middle and we're going to place it on the dots. So this one is pointer finger. We're going to go ahead and just place it right on our pointer finger dot. And we're going to go over to our tracker window, click edit target, set it to left pointer and click OK. Now, all you need to do at this point is just click play. Make sure you're at your starting position here. Click play. You're going to see the track point is going to lock on to that. You see as we flip it, it gets lost. So we'll just stop it right there. So now that we have that tracker set up, just click apply and just go ahead and click OK. And now you're going to see you have this little red box. This is our null. This little red box is going to be over top of our left pointer finger, just like that. And it's following with the motion. And we're going to repeat those steps for each of our fingers. So pretty simple. You just select again, right click, track and stabilize, track the motion, place it on the next finger, edit the target, put it to left middle and you click play. Once you've done that again, you click apply. There you go. Now we have our next little null over top of our middle finger and keep repeating those steps. All right, so I have a null object for each of my fingers. As you see, they're all on my knuckles here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to map the skeleton to our tracking info. So to do that, we're going to use the puppet tool. And this is a really cool technique. Let's go ahead and just control shift D and split that here because we don't need it past this point. So we'll delete that. Start from here and we're going to use our puppet tool. So on our toolbar, it's this little last one puppet position tool. We're just going to select each of the knuckles. So we'll forget the th we'll forget the thumb for now. Let's just link this first. So knuckle, 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 just like that. And if we scroll down here, you can see our puppet tool. Let's open that up in our effects. Open up mesh one, open up deform. And you're going to see each of our puppet pins, which we can now select and manipulate. So to link this to the tracking info, we're going to use a little expression and that's going to be in the description. So just copy and paste that into your expression editor whenever we go ahead and set it up. Let's start with our pointer finger. This is puppet pin one. If you want, you can even rename this to pointer. It's up to you if you want to stay organized like that. Open up pointer finger. 
and we're going to change the pin type to advanced. Now what we're going to do is at our starting position here, again, we're going to link. So we're going to hold down alt and we're going to click on position. It's going to turn red and now we can paste in our little expression. So again, go to the description, copy the expression and we're going to control V to paste it over what's here. Then all you need to do is just scroll up with your mouse wheel and you'll see where it says this comp layer and it's going to have these little quotations. It should say null object. Just select in that quotations and select whichever null corresponds to where you want to track. So mine was pointer finger. So I'm going to select left pointer and just click away. Now, as I move here, you're going to see that this entire finger is going to be bending with the tracking info that I created. So that's an easy way to link it to any of the track markers that you used. And that way you don't have to manually use the puppet tool to kind of create this fake movement that's not going to match up perfectly. You can have this perfectly match onto these markers that you drew on whatever part you want and have it as easy as that. If you wanted to, you could even use this technique on the skull face. I haven't experimented with that because I just did a tiny bit of rotation and it was pretty easy to do. But if you wanted to, if you were having some issues with the skull, you can even just put little puppet points, say I put one on the skull here, here, kind of corresponding with the facial points and then you just link that all together. So this is a great technique, it's very powerful and we're gonna go ahead and do this to the rest of the fingers here. So let's show you one more time. Let's go to puppet pin two. This is going to be our middle finger and that up, change it to advanced, alt click the position, control V to paste in the expression and then scrolling up, you just change this comp layer to whatever this is. So this is left middle and there you go now our middle finger is linked to that knuckle so we have the knuckle linked up and let's keep going through puppet pin three this is our ring you get an error even though you did it sometimes you'll just need to get rid of that little space and then it'll work there we go so we have all of the knuckles completely linked up again i think that's a super useful tool that you can do see this still isn't perfectly linked up there's still a lot of issues here what you may be thinking is oh i can just take my puppet tool i can just plop some more pins here and i could just change the positioning like this. Well, what you're gonna notice is these aren't gonna look that good with motion. So as you see, it kind of just turns into like jelly. So your only option for what to do and not get this crazy kind of like jelly motion, because these are reacting to these pins, is you can either A, repeat the steps where I made the motion, you can just control D all your little nulls, left pointer two, left middle two. And you can make a new tracking info for different dots. So I can make more nulls. I could track them to these dots. I can make more nulls. I could track them to these dots if I want it to be completely perfect with each of the bending of the joints and then link them all using the way that I just showed you. To save time, what you also could do, let's go back in here. Let's go ahead and just make some new puppet pins again, that like that. And this time, Let's open up our mesh here. So open up our mesh. These are the ones that aren't named are the new ones. So you select it, you open it up, change your pin type to bend and not position. So if you change it to bend, it's not going to be as crazy. It's going to stay stiff like that. And then you can still kind of grab it and you could scale it down. If you want to, you could bend it to have it fit. And that way, that part is just going to be stiff. Again, it's just going to stay straight. It's only going to be following the movement of the knuckle. So that's a little trick to save you some time, not have to go through with insane amounts of track nulls. But again, if you wanted to, you could go in and track null all of it. So let's do that for all of these. We're going to scale them down and we're going to bend them a bit. There you go. We now have this tracked over top of our hand. We save some time just by placing the other parts of the finger on bend and we'll compensate for that with the blending. We're going to hide this and not make it look as stiff. You can also, of course, do the same with the wrist. So if you look at my original comp where here, as you can see, I started to blend everything together. But if we grab the skeleton hand and we look at our puppet, you'll see that I also did a little track on my wrist. I just did a little motion track like how it did on my points. And I linked another position onto my wrist, also placed another bend just to affect it. So use those techniques. I think it's a powerful underutilized thing that's, that exists within After Effects.